Thanks for staying with us. Now, quietly, many women in the world face an uphill battle at home, at work, and on college campuses. The battle is sexual harassment. The numbers are staggering. Every day, hundreds of, uh, of thousands of women are sexually harassed in developing nations um, because of the custom and tradition. Women are afraid to speak out. In addition, they feel ashamed and are fearful of losing their jobs if they bring sexual harassment to the attention of authorities. Now, also, sexual harassment is clearly an example of the challenges faced by human resource function in the new global market. Now, we stumbled on a Twitter feed where a young girl narrated her ordeal of how she was sexually harassed and constantly bullied for not giving in to her harasser's advances. She just, um, she's just one out of several women. So how can we create a safe and equal environment, especially for women in the workspace? And how do we re-engineer the minds of our men? <laughs> So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818034663. I'll bring in Dan in one minute, but I just want to hear AK. Just AK. Okay, cool. Yeah. AK, <laughs> tell me, um, sexual harassment, workspace, how is it like, you know, these days? It's very hard. It's very, very hard. It's a very difficult topic because of the interest of both parties because it's possible that someone is lying and then you would need proof so sometimes when you see people ask for proof it's just because there's no other there's no other way mm. you know to be able to verify that story mm. someone that's aggrieved can can say anything is your word against theirs. so mm. i think sexual harassment in the workplace is a very difficult conversation to have it's a very difficult thing to prove but organizations are going in to put measures in place that you need to report it no matter what it is even if it's a flick of the but we need to investigate it we need to know it and a lot of times there are even um some companies form like a women group where they talk about these things and they've even gone you see in those days you have offices where um, that are you have solid now have walls now plan. you have open floor apart from open floor plan you see that those corner offices are now transparent glasses Glass. so Yes, Those organizations are, are making intentional moves mm. to try to stem this, but does it still happen? Yes, yes it does. Absolutely. Just to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> she told you. Um, so I, I believe that the work of the HR professionals is becoming more, and mm. this is the space That's the where biggest challenge they have right now. And I like that you mentioned it mm. while you were introducing the topic. Um, I know of a case, this is not a hearsay, of someone who was harassed um, and she went to the HR to report and the HR said so if I take this up I hope you know he's going to lose his job is this what you want for him okay you know so this is a story very recent it's not years ago it's about two three weeks ago so they need to also begin to understand the power they wield and understand what sexual harassment is or any form of harassment and take it up. So there has to be that system for them to also yeah. take it up and take it up right. Um, exactly. the, the victim doesn't need to be worrying about the perpetrator losing his job or her it's, job. Yeah, right? it's already, yeah. It's already too much. All right, so Dana Pata is a public speaker and a certified relationship coach and he's joined us live in studio. <laughs> For the conversation thank you so much for joining us thank you i saw you smiling all through when they were talking you know oh, yeah. you were a man and you know it was important that we had this conversation and we had it with a man because you know most times when women are talking about things men just feel like we like to sulk a lot we like to do this a lot i mean it's constant mm. we know women harass men in the workplace i've seen women bosses that will tell the guy if you do not sleep with me you're not going to get promoted and all of that it does happen but 10 out of every um, case of sexual harassment is usually at about 8.5 would be a man harassing a woman yeah that's one so i was looking at it is this possible that this can be tied to the superiority that a man feels over a woman because we're trying to tie you know the safety of the woman equality and all of that is it possible that this staggering numbers that we're seeing is that a man feels like okay you know what i am big i am above you as a woman maybe that's why it's so easy for them to harass i cannot come and harass you now no matter how far you are <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? So help me understand. Why not your this. nature? <laughs> no, who told you I can seduce you, but I cannot harass you. 
Yeah. It's a thin line. Yeah, well, know. it's a thin line. <laughs> yeah, it's a thin line, actually. So I feel that, uh, first and foremost, I don't think that the woman or the man is superior to the woman. Mm. I don't believe that. They are just, you know, different sides of one coin, you know. So it, it's, it's mentality. And I, I say to people that uh, three things make up a human being. Your upbringing, your experiences, and then your environment. Now, let's say your upbringing was not at par. You saw your father dominate your mother. But then growing up, have you tried to develop yourself and become a better version of you? You get to find out that, oh, that mentality is a wrong mentality. Mm. You know, so you now begin, because I live in an environment where they feel that ladies should be in the kitchen, ladies should, you know, not aspire, should not. And I started to think that, no, this is not the kind of life I want to live. Mm. I want a woman that can think, that can challenge me. Mm. Not just somebody that I'll say, sit down, back like a dog. Up on one leg, mm. you know. <laughs> no, I want someone who can challenge me, and you know that's why when my wife and I met, the questions she was asking me like, okay, this one is different, mm. you know. So that she she we have this mental intercourse, mm. you know. So most men, okay. I'm sorry, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 Go ahead. That's, that's it's a term like. that we are just yeah. trying to ruminate over. Mm. <laughs> 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 okay. So I'm in line. Yes, yeah, you're in line. Great. You know, so she and I, we, we sit down, we talk, I ask questions. At times, I run to her for help. Mm. Because I believe that I am not whole by myself. You know, so when you are in that level, when you don't relegate women to the background, you understand that you are, you are you know, a different part of, the, of one coin. You know, so she comes into your life to make it better, to add her spice to it. Mm. And I tell a lot of guys that, look, when you are in a relationship, you call the lady your better half. If we trace it and look at it, men will not like what I'm about to say. The reality is women are equipped better to help men. Please repeat it again. Okay. Okay. No, repeat it. <laughs> repeat it. Repeat it. Repeat it. I said women are equipped uh -huh. better mm -hmm. to help more. men. Okay, so I do not like that constantly when we have this sort of conversation, we always have to say what you said before you made the statement. Men will not like what I'm about to say. Mm. That is the question. That's why we're engineering. Why, would they not why wouldn't like they it? not like it? What happened to their brain? What is the problem? <laughs> exactly. Where did this start from? <laughs> Again, maybe I should just bring in my question so I won't take much of the time or, uh, for AK. I worked in an environment where there's this certain guy who harasses people but he doesn't even understand that it is harassment mm. he just touches you anyhow hugs you from the back um you're wearing a skirt that is flurry and he then he raises it up and you try to correct him and he's like i'm playing with you joe what is wrong with you that's an expensive play you know we tried over and over and over again to make this boy understand that what you are doing you are getting away with this because maybe this company, they are not ready to behave. And secondly, it is Nigeria. If you cross the shores of this country and go to a senior climb, you will be in jail. Yeah. Your parents will come and look for you there. Mm. Do you understand? But he still did not understand it. So how did we have this set of men in the community or in the society? As I said in the beginning, mm. upbringing. Mm. Upbringing. It is very, very key. And then growing up, I mean, I heard what was said about someone who HR called and they were like, look, if we take this up, I hope you know he's going to lose his mm -hmm, job. Mm -hmm. Now, and then the question, is that what you want? Hello? How, How should I even be placed with that burden? Yeah. I mean, if someone on a job develops a bad habit, you don't have all that person. It's higher and fire. Hmm. You know, there's no sentiment about it. It's life. Okay, if he was to do something, you know, in another from area company. that life, life does not negotiate with you. It eats you up and that's it. That's life. It's life. You know, so it's our upbringing and what we have been allowed, you know, to relate with and what mix with. What we have with. accepted. What yeah. we have accepted. You know, so we, we, we I, I, I like the conversation and I believe that a lot of men are beginning to, you know, think differently. It's, it's not as um, big, you know, as we would like it, but gradually the sensitization and the realization is coming. Mm -hmm. When I sit down with them, especially in, in counseling, someone called me one time and said, 
he doesn't like the wife listening to my show. Mm. I said, why? He said, the way I talk, I make her feel good. I said, you ought to pay me because I'm making your wife feel good. <laughs> and he said, no, that she bounces back on him and tells him, can you hear? Are you listening? That's my guy, you know? <laughs> Mm. And then he made a statement. He said, no, I'm the man. Now me marry him. Now me the climber. Okay. That's what I said. <laughs> That's the question I said. You know, I think the, the re-engineering is for men to stop feeling like they are superior. But, 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 where where you do know, we start from? Do you understand? So, yeah. I was even going to say, um, I need to talk about the, the role that organizations, by that I mean um, the things we see on the TV, mm. the media, the way we propagate these things. And let me take, for example, if you have an advert of um, maybe a seasoning, you see a woman cooking, the man is just coming out. So we are, in a way, reinforcing this thing. So there's you, a conditioning there's, process. Exactly. Mm. So the things that we see enable us, you know. So you see there's a cleaning detergent. It is a woman that is washing. It is a woman that is cleaning the toilet. Mm. If there is a drink that's mostly alcoholic, it's just that some of them are changing its life. It's a mm. man that is drinking. The woman is resting on the arm as a p side piece. You get so in putting out these things, how do these things affect the way we think, affect the way we objectify and view the place of a woman in the society? Well, it, it's, it's, it's not far-fetched. We have accepted that way of life as the man being the, the alpha. You know, uh, some men, I, I you know, call them, they are the lion of a tribe of their three-bedroom flat. <laughs> so they roar. When the man is coming, everybody run for cover. And you just try to make sure that everything is okay. That is the projection that we have been putting out there. I tell, I tell them when they come for counseling, I said, cleaning, cooking, is not a woman's job. It's a human job. If you're, if you're hungry, you should be able to cook and eat. If your house is dirty, it's not because you married a wife, then the wife should cook and clean. No, you can get a cook. And then where they, they are humbled is when I get to ask them, okay, so if your wife was worth a hundred million naira, would you still think and talk to her like this? And then they are quiet. And then they now start to look at things differently. Hmm. And before then, I asked them, when you were getting married, where was the woman? Was she under your feet? They say, no. Was she behind you? They say, no. I say, where was she? They say, she was right by my side. I say, what does that tell you? It's partnership. And the fact that you are told that you are the man of the house, you are the head of the house, that title is ceremonial. Oh, yeah, it's ceremonial. It's not for you to be lording it over her. No, it's ceremonial. So both of you ought to work hand in hand to make sure that your family progresses. And as the man, the onus is on you to make sure that you stoop to conquer. Okay. Hmm. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Because <laughs> okay. I was going to ask if question. we will not hold the organizations accountable for the things uh, that they Because you know what I want to say that? Because this one he has explained now. So men... They forget that it is the Beautiful. wife in the house that mm. they are supposed to be doing that to. It is the subordinate at work. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>